What's going on guys, Victor here. I got this beautiful, beautiful blackfin tuna right here. A Key West blackfin tuna that our buddy Captain Cody put us on. I'm gonna flay this guy up. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how we caught him, the methods we used and everything to get tuna on the table. Everything's just gonna be epic. Stay tuned, hope you guys enjoy. Right, guys we are done AJ jigging and uh, we're about to start live chumming right Cody mm -hmm. what are we are like in 230 240 240 here is there like a specific thing you look for a ledge or anything or no, we're fishing over a rack oh. that the tunas like to hang out around we're gonna throw the hook and see what happens Cody's throwing the hook we're gonna anchor up and that way we're in one spot and our chums just swimming all around the boat and then tunas from the surrounding areas is gonna come by eat our little baits toss our bait in and hook up I hope it's a blackfin. One can hope. It's going down. Oh yeah, I think that's a blackfin. Oh, he's deep. Yeah, he went straight down. Yeah, you can tell. Blackfin on, baby. Yeah. And there'll be head shakes too, big head mm -hmm. shakes down deep. Yeah, that's a tuna. This, by the way, kicks his tail. Not the duh, 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 yeah. of a bonita. And the fact they don't rise to the surface right. instantly. Yeah. Alright, Vic, you got the first black fin on. I hope I do. I hope I do. You can kind of tell they they fight way differently than a bonita does than a bonita does. Black fins, they tend to go down deep and they have these big head shakes. And like Cody was saying, you see the rod tip violently jerk. Whereas Bonita, it's like da -da 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 -da, you feel that tail kicking. If the tuna's pop, grab this jig right off the top and just sling it out there and reel it in like a top water. Fill it. I don't know. That's a black thing. Just because we're, we're those people. We're sporting. Daddy. You. There we go. First black fin in the boat. Can't beat that. It's a out of I line. love that. They're like an airplane. See that? You get their peg fin sideways like that? That's so sick. Completely different fight than a bonita. Beautiful, nice. beautiful fish. Oh, they're right behind the boat right now, Cody. Oh, those are, or those bonies. I think those were bonies. The bigger the bait, the, bait too, you know? the bigger the bait, the more likely you're gonna get. Damn, you might have the right one. I got bony. Yeah. Brown. Another Kirby? Right. It's shafted right now, but. Be a, be a black fin. Oh, it's going down. Oh my gosh. Heart attack. If the Benita be back right here, it would have had 10 to yeah, we can't get our baits past these. Yeah, because they're really black when they come out. Thanks. You want to go grab them by the tail? There frame? we go. There That's a good go. one. Nice one. That's a stud. Oh, on this one. Blackfin. Yeah, that's a blackfin. Ah, oh, pulled. So what you doing, Stanley? Uh, right now Explain we're to us. we're freelining these live pilchards that Cody Nat earlier. You're gonna see that if you haven't already. And uh, literally, I'm throat hooking them so they swim down deeper, try to get to those black fins. But literally, just flipping out these pilchards and they're getting picked up almost instantly. He's over here live chumming, so that's really key. Oh, I just got bit. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> ah, there you go. So I think that took all of 15 seconds. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. These fish are out here. They're boiling everywhere. 
We just need to find the black fin. And I think right now it's just a lot of bonitas, but eventually the black fins will get here. And Cody says that the further you get into sundown, the fewer and fewer bonitas generally you get, and then the more and more the black fins show up. Hell yes. Yeah. Right where they boiled it. Yeah. They're way, way, way back there now. Right, let's go. Oh my gosh. Hey, Why am I not getting bird. eaten? Put a new bait on. Yeah, you gave me a minute. Oh, you need to watch out. Yeah, it's getting real thin. You better watch out. Oh my god. Heart attack. Oh, damn. Brooke, you took your real bait. Come on. Sorry, I'll get you in there. You're busting. You can take that jig, we'll trade. Oh, Victor, you're gonna get a bite. Victor's gonna catch a tuna. There he is. I'm about to, I'm about to. I'll leave Victor's top and look at him. Dang, the tuna was striking. Who's that right closer? That's right there, right there, right there. Drop it down. Go a little bit further out. Right there, perfect. Keep popping, keep popping. A little faster. Oh! oh no! Oh, instantly breaking. popped off. Oh, oh, he broke it. Oh, he broke the braid. There we go. Tuna? Yeah. Vic, take a video, or who's the other camera on? I do. I didn't think so. Look at the shark. Ooh, that's a hammer for sure. Oh! Yep. Is it really? <laughs> you got a bonita? Victor! King Bonito. Oh my god, that's a big bonita. It's a jumbo. I'm ready. Dang, grunt eater. <laughs> nice one. Dude, the bigger your bait is, the bigger tuna you I catch. see that. I they don't want those little baits. That's a tuna. <laughs> Look at that thing! I like this. this morning, I was like, oh, you, oh, you hardcore. Yeah. Yes. So, they're real rods. I got the ugliest rods around. Oh, he just got stuck. Oh, right I got there. eaten. Oh, look at the hammer. Oh, yeah. he got so shark. Fired up. Is that, that's how look how big he is. He's like 400 pounds right here behind the boat. Look at him. Okay, when I get the leader, I'm gonna pass it to you and I'm gonna lead her. Look thick! Come on. Oh, that's it's not. a muffin! Yeah. Yes. <laughs> He's a keeper. Nice one. Nice one. Nice one. Alright guys, so welcome back to the filet table. As you guys heard me say and just saw us catch these blackfin tuna, these are just, it's just this perfect little football shaped fish with these really, really cool airplane looking peck fins. I just love looking at different fish, their anatomy. They got these big old eyeballs and these things are actually really smart. Uh, when we were catching them, all the bonitas would get to the baits first. The black fins really gotta get fired up. You gotta really toss a lot of baits out there. And it, it you know, it goes to show you, I think these eyeballs have a big part in that as, as to why they're so smart. So just like the uh, all the other tunas I fillet, I always like to cut them right down the middle along the center line. And you guys will see why, because I like to do a top loin and then a bottom loin. It just makes filleting a lot easier because they are uh, kind of like that concave body. And when it gets to the backbone of the, of the fish, that meat kind of goes up. And when you try to go all down this way of the fish, you end up missing a lot of meat. So what we're gonna do here is, I got that cut. Now we're gonna make this cut right here along the head. And you guys can kind of feel where that head meat kind of ends right here, right at that bone. Now I'm going to take my knife and I got to find the backbone, right? I'm just going barely in, barely in, and I try to find a ride along that bone. 
The more time you take, the, the more careful and patient you are, the me less meat and the less sushi you're gonna be missing with these fish. And really kind of just use the weight of the fish and this uh, flesh kind of pull it up and use your knife and you guys hear that knife kind of just tearing the um, fish and bone apart. And I'm trying to meet my center cut line right there. That's all I'm doing. You can use one end, the, the end that you cut, like I cut my, uh, so I cut my tuna right here and now I can kind of slowly lift and make my cuts and you can actually hear that fish separating and tearing. And once you cut enough of it away from the bone, it'll just tear right off right here by the head. Cut that, separate it. And now I got this end free too. Does that top loin free? Part of the skin came off of there, but you guys get the general idea. So see that? This is what you want. See how it's translucent? I barely missed any of the meat right here. And it's because I took my time and you guys see what I mean is that fish kind of just folds up onto itself. And yeah, so we got that. This is all just the trash uh, bloodline anyway. You don't want to eat this stuff. This is very bloody. So now what I'm doing, I got the top loin off. Now I'm going to do the bottom loin. And like I always do, you grab, grab the, the loin with your hand and you see I'm kind of going to work my knife down because this bone comes up. You can't go straight across it. So I lift it up slowly, always making contact with the knife and the fish and the bone. Okay. Go. Bam, look at that. Now that is a good tuna job right there. You can actually use the skin itself to kind of pull and uh, just glide right along. Bam, look at that. Welcome back to the kitchen guys and let's jump right into it and I just wanna talk about this gorgeous piece of tuna loin that I got right here in front of me. You guys see this little bit of dark stuff right here? I am gonna cut this out and I specifically chose this section to make my tuna steaks out of. Now to make steaks from fish, you gotta have a really firm textured fish, a thicker bodied fish, and a thicker cut so you can make these just beautiful, they, they honestly look like filet steaks, you know what I mean? Uh, th this triangular shape, you want a thicker uh, cut so you can put it on the grill, it's not going to dry out. Now I'm going ahead and marinating these steaks on and throw them on the grill. So I'm starting out with some soy sauce for my marinade, as well as some orange juice, you know, get that sweetness in there, the sugar is caramelized. And now for our oil, I went with olive oil. And you guys see I'm making just on uh, just two thirds of a cup of uh, liquid. Put some oregano in there as well, as well as three cloves of garlic squished. Now this is flat leaf parsley right here, which is a lot more potent than your traditional, the Italian curly parsley, but it has a really good fragrance to it. Now we're gonna add the juice of half of a lemon mix it all together and just put it in a stainless steel mixing bowl. Uh, you know, kind of just get in there with your hands, mix it up and just, I put this in the fridge for about an hour, hour and 30 minutes. It was the first thing I did with my recipe. Now I'm going to be serving this with a salad and for a salad we're doing a homemade raspberry vinaigrette, starting off with some red wine vinegar, some olive oil for our vinaigrette. And then we're also going to be adding some garlic in here just one clove so it's not too strong. The juice of half of a lemon, the other half that you guys saw me use in there. And I put that whole garlic in there because it's gonna be blended up in our magic bullet. And now I had some leftover basil so I went ahead and added that. It gives it a, uh, some fragrance. And I wanted it to be a thicker bodied vinaigrette so I went and added some Greek yogurt. Uh, go ahead and give this guy a blend and you guys see you get this really creamy texture. I also just had a little bit of honey left over in the pantry so don't, went ahead and decided to throw that in there. That's our vinaigrette. Now the next thing you guys see right here is I'm making a really good creamy sauce for our sandwich, for our tuna sandwich. I did half mayonnaise, half sour cream, some black pepper, basil, the juice of, uh, I think it was like a quarter of a lemon, went ahead and blended this all up and this, you guys will see it on the sandwich later. Now for a salad, just, you know, a spring mix, put into our stainless steel mixing bowl and I'm gonna go ahead and add some of these tomatoes in there, cut them up into nice little bite-sized pieces as well as some cucumber. And this technique that I'm doing with the fork right here is actually something that my girlfriend Brick taught me, who is actually in the kitchen. 
and it just gives you a nice little presentation for your cucumber, you know, something different, something that really stands out for your salad. Now the last thing going in our salad is going to be red onion for the vegetable compo component as well as some fresh oregano and I actually did add some pepper. As I told you guys, we are making sandwiches. I got a big thick cut uh, tomato. Now let's go to the grill. Uh, wiping down the grates of the grill with some olive oil to prevent sticking. And now here comes my favorite part, putting these beautiful steaks on the grill. Very important to use a thicker cut uh, of the steaks you don't want it too thin and these cook very very fast you don't want to overcook them tuna is kind of a drier fish and that's why i want to really uh you know baste these guys marinate them good make sure they got plenty of juice and uh a, a hot hot grill was really important to get those really nice grill marks and your grill will let you know when these fish are ready to be turned if they're fighting you and they don't want to be turned they'll let you know so go ahead dish these guys up and how good does that look I mean that just makes my mouth water doing this voiceover all over again one of my favorite ways to eat fish is grilled coming back to our ciabatta bread I'm gonna go ahead and spread our uh, our basil cream sauce that I made earlier onto here as well as some arugula now arugula is something that I have not worked with a lot in uh, my cooking career and uh, but it's something I really do enjoy and it goes really good on ciabatta really good with fish dishes so pile our tuna steaks on there we got a nice slice of tomato on there and it's just all coming together you got all these colors and life now dish this up with some of our spring mix salad top it off with that raspberry vinaigrette and you guys see that texture and consistency that yogurt adds a, a fuller body to it serve it with some fresh raspberries and you're good to go so tonight we have little tuna and a barbecue. The uh, sauce was very, very delicious. And we ate that with the uh, Italian, how do you call the bread? Ciabatta. Ciabatta. Yeah, it's kind of gone together very good. And everything was just perfect. Oh, and the homemade raspberry vinegar dressing. That's really, you can tell the difference between the store one, grocery one, and the homemade one. <coughs> My son say everything. I can't finish, I'm so full, you know, because it's too much. Nice two pieces, tuna, uh, oh, ciabatta, arroz, and good salad with the raspberry. Sorry, I can talk in there, I'm so full. It's <laughs> <laughs> good. Okay, Brookie, what did you think? Well, I thought last week was my favorite recipe that you've made, and I think this is either number one or a very, very close <laughs> second. It was really, really good. Everything complemented each other really well. It was just, it was honestly amazing. It was like five-star quality, really good. Every, like I always tell you guys, you know, like last week I was poaching. I don't do a lot of grilled fish, and grilled fish, there aren't that many species that you could throw on the grill because you need a nice, meaty, uh, a thick filleted fish, you know, kind of like the, the shoulder section of a tuna, and you really got to take your time and just this made for an awesome meal with good people. I mean, the my one of my favorite parts of the meal was that basil mayo grease oh, yeah, on, really on the ciabatta. I wish I, wish I had more of that. <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing I ran out of. But all in all, you guys see our plates are empty, our bellies are full. Thank you guys for watching, and if you guys haven't already, make sure to subscribe to Brooke. She also has a YouTube channel as well, does plenty of catching cooks. I will link that in the description box below, and as always, I'll be seeing all you guys, my land sharks, in that next video.